Now, surely one of the things I was really curious to see how it played out Monday night, and I'm not the only one. I'm sure, there are plenty of you that were thinking the same thing. How is it going to go with Keith Lee's debut on Monday Night Raw? We saw what happened Saturday night at NXT TakeOver 30, him dropping the strap to the now injured and since having to surrender the title himself, carrying Cross, and assumed that this meant a jump up to the main roster pretty quickly. And it did. As here he comes Monday night on Raw. And so there he was. Keith Lee, and admittedly put in a big spot, facing off with Randy Orton. Getting a match with Randy Orton. Not exactly chump change if you can get it, that's for sure. But as the debut happened and it kind of played out, you know, there were a lot of fans that were going to Twitter and venting and voicing frustration and complaining, which I guess is something that we do certainly as wrestling fans. But to be fair, we just learned it from the wrestlers who are the biggest bitches involved in the wrestling bubble by far. Um, his theme music had changed. It went from being something hard-hitting and matching his personality to being more generic kind of cookie-cutter crap that you would expect the WWE to do nowadays. His ring gear changed. Now he's wearing a shirt. He's wearing basketball shorts. And I saw several people talking about how Vince McMahon has already ruined Keith Lee. And the amount of discussion I saw about that made me think that they put a gladiator helmet on him for crying out loud. He, he did that before. Uh, but that talent, Ron Simmons, was able to overcome that. My goodness. After one night, Keith Lee is already ruined. Now look. There certainly is a tremendous, tremendous amount of precedent in history to talk about how if somebody gets up to the main roster and Vince sinks his teeth into him and Kevin Dunn this is how we do sports entertainment and, 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 and once they sink their teeth into him they ruin a lot of people and to be clear that is certainly true to also be clear it's not only solely or exclusively black wrestlers that fall victim to that. Let's also be clear that that certainly happens to a good number of black wrestlers in Vince's WWE. Like, all of those things can be true, and all of those things certainly are. So I understand the quick kind of snap reflex reaction here, thinking that we've already ruined Keith Lee, or you're telling yourself he's ruined Keith Lee because you've seen this jam come far too many times. And you know, even though it technically didn't happen after one night, it is inevitable just a matter of time. And <clears throat> he'll be a joke. It's kind of hard to argue with that. You know, from a historical perspective, viewing it from the lenses of knowing Vincent K. McMahon and what he does with his organization, especially with a lot of these guys when they do come up with NXT, from NXT. Yeah, like it certainly makes sense why some fans would be really, really, really worried about it. And I can say that I'm not a little bit worried about it either. But I think perhaps, at least for the moment, while I'm not necessarily giving the benefit of the doubt to a company that in a person in Vince McMahon that deserves absolutely none of it, I, I think we should we should cool our tits just a little bit here. Just a little bit. I'll agree with you. The theme music was crap. Just absolute garbage. Maybe there was the reason they were talking about the CFO stuff and they wanted to get away from using their theme music. Whatever the case might be. Whatever the case might be. You change the theme music. I have nothing wrong with changing the theme music, in theory. As long as what you change it to is really good and it first fits the character and the personality. That generic anthem I heard on Monday night sure as hell didn't do that. I don't understand sometimes why things get changed when there's really not a reason to do it. Or at least a good reason to do it. Now, sure, sometimes you can make an argument that change can be good. You get a new start, a new thing, new deal, and that's fine. 
But change, kind of for the sake of change, just is unnecessary. And when I look at that theme music, it's not so much to me that they changed it from what he did at NXT, because, it, again, more than half of Raw's audience doesn't watch NXT. So it would be a new theme to more of the fans watching Raw than not. So it's okay to change the theme. But good Lord Almighty, can we change it to something good? And then when you talk about the gear, I opined on Twitter Monday night, it's like Vince McMahon looked at him and said, Goddamn, kid! You gotta cover that gut! Put on a shirt! And basketball shorts! Nobody wants to see that nastiness kind of bleh, bleh, bleh around. I just picture Vince saying that in his head and perhaps saying it to Keith Lee for all the hell we know. And looking at that ring gear, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't good. I will, I will, again, I'll give, I'll give you a lot of you guys that. Like the basketball shorts look like a freaking skirt and not a manly type of kilt or anything that you could spin in any type of positive way. Again, that looked like a change for the sake of change and not necessarily for a positive change. That I really don't get. And just because the dude's a little round, just because he has a little belly, like he's not so grotesquely obese and he doesn't have like the blah, 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 where you couldn't get away with it. You know, wrestling has always been at its best historically when you have differences. Different characters, different personalities, different physiques, different styles, different types of talkers, like all of that. Why would you sit there and cover up Keith Lee when you didn't need to? Why would you give him some generic crap theme when you didn't need to? Like, these are the types of things you should not be doing with somebody that you potentially have high hopes for, that you actually see something in. I just don't get it. Now, as far as the spot that he was put in, was he really just called up just to kill some time for Randy Orton at payback? I got to question that a little bit. I would also say for a guy like Keith Lee, I certainly understand the folks I would have liked to have seen him be a total and complete surprise. But you know, there's also something about hyping somebody up before they debut. Trying to get the maximum of what you can out of it, like building up anticipation and excitement for somebody. Sure, the more serious wrestling fans love the surprise pop, but that's not always the best way to do business. It's helpful sometimes to do this. It's cool okay, and okay sometimes to do it, but not as a consistent business model. You want to do vignettes. You want to build them up. You want to introduce characters in the right way, in a way that's going to really get them over. I frankly would have liked to have seen a month, month and a half of Keith Lee vignettes Hyping him up, run him on both Raw and SmackDown. Create some anticipation for where he's going to be and shoot when he debuted. Debut him on both shows that first week and see where the hell it works better. Like, put him over. Put him over really big. And, you know, admittedly, there's a lot of history there with Horton. And, you know, some of it in terms of some of the things he said, and we know what we're talking about here. And just some of it is his history in terms of how he's dealt with something, some guys in the past and his tendency to like to bury people that he didn't like. Uh, but admittedly, that piece of it largely has gone by the wayside in recent years. Orton does a lot of jobs to the point where he probably actually does too many of them. But similar to Cena, he's doing a bunch of jobs now that don't really matter anymore. Like it's nice of him to come around and get his head out of his ass at least a little bit. In terms of being unselfish, but it's too late. Damage already mostly been done. Been done. But I will also say that you're talking about you bringing Keith Lee night one out the jump. Out the gate, out jump street. Dude's working a program with Randy Orton. So he comes in and gets interjected into a world title feud. It is facing off against one of the members of the Breakfast Club. Well, yes, the theme music was god-awful, and I thought the ring attire sucked balls. And I understand all the history and the reasons that you might believe that you, you have an idea of where this is going, and it certainly could. You know, ruin me like that. Put me in a spot on Raw in one of the crossover one-hour segments 
Put me in a spot against Randy Orton where I'm working a match against Orton. I'm getting a pay-per-view match against Orton. I'm being linked to the champion, Drew McIntyre. Like, if you're going to get ruined, that's a pretty good way to get ruined, isn't it? Now, if they had Keith Lee doing the backstage interview afterwards, and he was starting to dance, or he was rhyming, or he was doing some type of singing or something, now that, at that point in time, based off of Vince's history of what he likes to do with his non-white wrestlers, then, at that point in time, rage away with your flaming keyboard fingers and fire. But putting him in a spot where he's feuding with Orton from night one, while there are other stupid things that were done, yes, and there are other things that make me want to uh, meet Mr. Pukey if you get my drift. That's hardly ruining him at this point. I may end up being, give it a few months, and he'll be ruined. Why do you have to change anything that Keith Lee did at NXT? Well, A, NXT typically gets less than half the audience of Raw, so NXT is small potatoes by comparison. Just facts. Hashtag deal with it. It probably begs a larger question of why would you change something that was succeeding at a smaller scale or why would you do something at a smaller scale even if it succeeds because ultimately you're not going to do it at the larger scale anyways. The smaller scale should be getting you ready for the larger scale. The things you're doing at NXT should be in lockstep with what you have envisioned for them once they hit one of the main rosters, either Raw or SmackDown. Right? I'm just saying. So settle down a little bit on the, the tragedy of Keith Lee being ruined. Let's give it three months and wait to see how he gets ruined. And we might be pleasantly surprised for once. He might not be. You know, admittedly, because of the history, uh, WWE and Vince get zero benefit of the doubt from me because they haven't earned it and they don't deserve it. I fully anticipate at some point in time they will find a way to ruin him. But even with the ring, the ring gear change and the music change after one night, I think it's a little premature to say that they've already ruined him. You can say they did things with him that you didn't like. They did things with him that I did not like. But ruin him? Eh, you probably got to wait until at least Survivor Series a little bit later before that happens. I mean, come on now. 